Hello, Zip Strike Army. My name is Jacob, as always, and welcome to week number two of the NPCC, where we're facing Phantom Base, aka Tyler, our good friend. Um, he's been he's been our friend since like we joined PMC season three in January. So, um, him and I have just gotten better to become better friends over the course of this year. Obviously, eight months. So, I'm really looking forward to this game, and I always have fun battling him. I think I faced him. This is definitely the second game we face, or maybe the third. I don't, we didn't face off PMC. We faced off an APA week two, uh, funnily enough. Um, and then we're facing off here. I think this might just be our second game. I know we face off in UPC uh, showdown right now, so that'd be cool. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, we're gonna go over his team, our team, uh, the Pokemon we brought. We're not gonna go over specific details on EV spreads and everything like that. But I will go over a brief summary of the team. I don't want to reveal everything because we didn't use particular sets in this matchup. And I don't think I told him after the battle about certain sets that we brought. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go over some of the team though. Um, as you can see, um, we have a Tapu Koko, Mega Sceptile, Nidoqueen, Alamomala, Chinchino, and Hitmonlee. So three of our Pokemon are making their debut being Mega Sceptile, Chinchino, and Hitmonlee. And I'm really happy to be bringing those Pokemon this week. And then he's brought Doug Trio, Clefable, Manaphy, Mega Ampharos, Crustle, and Metacham. So his 11 Pokemon actually were. Where is it? Manaphy, Cartana, Doug Trio, Clefable, Shanalure, Flygon, Metacham, Lifeguard, Mega Ampharos, Pikumiku, and Crustle. Honestly, I didn't see him bringing hazard removal. Um, well, I mean, he could have brought in Cartana. Cartana didn't have the worst matchup, but uh, Flygon had a pretty crappy matchup. We had a lot of things to deal with it relatively well. We could have brought Sugarberry Coco, we could have brought Scarf Coco, we could have, we have Mega Sceptile, um if he's not scarfed. Needle Queen if we're Sugarberry. Um Alamomola can take it on decently well. Um like offensive threats too, like if we're Scarf Chinchino or like Scarf uh Hitmonlee or something like that, like it could take it on well to a degree. So and also we have things like Volcarona that can take a hit from it unless it's banned. Well, even if it's banned, we can take one. But unless it has like Rock Slide slash Stone Edge, but we could have been Charty Berry. Um, we have Mandibuzz that actually will walk completely walls Flygon. Like Flygon, the only thing Flygon can do to it, I think. Um, well, if you were a Z move, which he's not, he's got Manaphy and Kartana as a Z moves. It could do a lot more. But yeah, um, just thought I would let you all know that yeah. He's not going to bring Flygon, I didn't think. Plus, we had could have brought, like, Sugarberry Flygon again. So, and plus, I think the other members of his team were just that much more crucial to bring than the other ones. But, yeah, um, he's got Metacham, and I instantly knew it was banded. I really thought it was going to be Adamant banned, so I kind of played my team according to do that. So, on uh, Nidoqueen, for example, we're just lead Nidoqueen, South Rocks, Toxic Spikes, Earth Power, Sludge Wave. I decided on Sludge Wave because Clefable was kind of a nuisance, and I wanted to be able to hit that thing as hard as I could potentially so in case it did become uh, potentially threatening so that's why we have sludge wave instead of something like ice beam for the flygon uh so yeah i, I think just stab is good on Nidoqueen queen this matchup uh we're lead sash because i wanted to get tax spikes up as soon as i could especially versus the team we didn't like lead with it per se because I, I anticipated duck tree to lead um, so I didn't, or Crustle, Doug Trail or Crustle I thought would be his two leads, so I didn't necessarily want to go that route. Uh, but yeah, uh, Needle Queen, um, has enough speed for Adamant Metacham, so we're timid with enough speed for Adamant Metacham, because I thought he would go Adamant, because Adamant hits our team so much harder than Jolly does. Um, yes, we have an ally, like, Jolly still hits extremely hard with the Choice Band. But I just thought he wanted to go more power, so I was just gonna get cheeky and try to speed creep a Jolly Medich or an Adamant Medicham if I could. But as you're gonna see, he's Jolly in the game once we get that far. Uh, but yeah, that's Needle Queen for you. Pretty offensive. I went more offensive this route because knowing Tyler, he would know that I'm more of a balanced or defensive player, and I don't think he would see more so hyper offense coming. And we actually pretty much went hyper offense to a T. Aside from my Alamomola and our Tapu Koko, we were pretty much hyper offense all the way. Um, but yeah, Needle Queen was supposed to be our designated lead if he didn't bring Crustle. If he, since he brought Crustle, I was afraid of Spike Slap, so uh, Tapu Koko was naturally lead because it had Taunt, Wild Charge, Nature's Madness, and Roost. Wild Charge was there in case of a Calm Mind, uh, Manaphy, 
I needed to hit physically rather than specially. As you can see last week with Brady, uh, he brought Calm Mind Mew and our uh, Thunderbolt was no match. If we would have had Wild Charge, it would have gave us a, gave us a better opportunity uh, to hit that Mew a lot harder. But yeah, Wild Charge is great for us here. Uh, Taunt is pretty cool is here because it can shut down a potential um, Crustal. It can shut down a Calm Mind Manaphy. It can shut down Clef pretty well. And be Clef, it can be Clef 1v1 as long as Clef is not set up already. It can shut down Mega Ampharos, so it cannot set up a an agility or anything like that. So that's very important as well. Plus, we are we resist one stab and we're immune to the other on Mega Ampharos, so he's probably gonna have to bring maybe like HP Ground or something to hit Tapu Koko. Obviously, he would click Thunderbolt if we're in Electric Train if that's up. But yeah, um, obviously since he had Doug Trio, we had to run Shed Shell. We had to go Shuka or Shed Cell here. Because I didn't want to get trapped with Coco, because I thought Coco was actually extremely important here. Because in combination with Toxic Spikes, Nature's Madness is going to be taking a toll on his team. And it's going to wear us down his team really, really nice. And since he didn't have a Poison type on his team, and I knew his Hazard removals, Removers were not going to be likely. Um, being Kurtana and Fly again, he pretty much has no Hazard Removal in those two. I thought this combo of those two would be just amazing here. Uh, Nature's Madness is basically offensive. It, it just a super thing that hits everything and that's just stupid the fact that all the tapus get it are amazing obviously that, that makes sense why they get it but it's just so good the tapus are really good especially like vgc draft form. it doesn't matter they're just good um but yeah that's tapu coco um next up i want to talk about elmamolo because basically we were forced to bring fizz def we brought wish protect toxic waterfall I'll go over this set because it makes sense to go over this set. And I might put like a screenshot of them up as I'm talking about them. Uh, but yeah, Elmamolo is important here because it allowed us to gauge Metacham. Scarf Metacham does not 2 hit KO, Band will easily 2 hit KO. So since we're fizzed off, max HP, max defense, we need to go this route so we can definitely scout the Metacham if it comes down to it. And Toxic is just nice in case we can't get Toxic Spikes up. Um, nothing can trap this thing. Uh, the only thing I was afraid of with Elmamola was Sub Manaphy. Because it was like Sub Tail Glow Manaphy or Sub Endure Tail Glow Manaphy or something of that nature. Not not like Sub. Yeah, just Sub. Yeah, Sub Tail Glow is what I was afraid of. Like if it was Sub Salic Berry or something like that. That could have been potentially a pretty big problem. Uh, but in case he was something weird like that we decided to go with scarf chinchino for a couple reasons one i thought scarf cartana was probably going to come because late game scarf cartana could clean up my team as we didn't have a scarfer yet on our team and with zero special attack investment and a minus special attack nature hp fire still locals cartana unless it's akaberry or it's very well it could be a salvas but that'd be silly if it was akaberry one two which, which he wouldn't run Akaberry, because Bugbuzz is still going to completely kill a Kartana. <laughs> with the Volcarona. Um, I mean, I guess he can run like that for, like, Needle Queen or something like that, but I, Earth Power would kill that thing still. You, you flick it with any special attack, it's going to die, is what I'm saying. But yeah, uh, we had Scarf Chinchino to, one, do that to um, check Scarf Kartana so it doesn't kill us. Two, checks either Scarf Manaphy or Rain Z Rain Dance Manaphy. Bullet Seed just did the job very well. And plus, if he were in Agility, Mega Amphros, we would outspeed that. And if we can get it to below half, it'd be in range of Tail Slap, which we... I actually was contemplating not running Tail Slap, but in combination, I was going to run U-Turn. I am glad I went for Stab, because I thought that was important, because his team didn't really have the best normal resist outside of Kartana and Chandelure, which we have super effective moves for both. Uh, Bullet Seed was also there for Manaphy because it would do more damage, obviously, to, than Tail Slap would. Plus, if we come late game, if we're down to like a half, like a 35% health Presto, Manaphy, and Dugtrio, Bullet Seed would just win us the game because I didn't think Scarf Dugtrio would come, but I still wanted to be sure and be careful on it for sure. Um, but yeah, that is Chinchino. Pretty generic, if I do say so myself. Uh, next up. We're going to talk about our one of our two win conditions here, and that is Sceptile. I'm going to briefly go over it. I'm just going to say Sceptile was one of our win conditions here. I'm not going to say what type of set we had. 
if you're really curious just pm me i will or like, like just pm me on discord or twitter i'll talk about the set i just don't want to reveal it here because i don't think i revealed it to him maybe he'll tell me in the comments below or not but yeah it had enough speed for uh, max speed dog trail that's all you gotta know about it that's all you, you gotta say about it but yeah just had enough speed for that and it had leaf blade that's all you're gonna see because uh, from it this game but uh yeah that's mega septile uh next up i actually can talk about this because we revealed all four moves but our first or our final win condition is actually going to be uh endure lychee berry hitmonlee i thought this had a very good chance of beating him uh, or just denting his team for the most part if this thing could dent his team because of toxic spikes are up uh this thing works out extremely well um, it can set up an Endure on Clefable, Crustle, Metacham, uh, so many potential Pokemon, and get that attack raise, and if it, if anything Scarf. It, it, he, he didn't have that much priority in his team. The only priority he had, I believe, was Sucker Punch on Dugtrio and Bullet Punch slash Fake Out on Metacham, which Bullet Punch was the only likely bring. I, I Yes, that I believe that was the only priority I see on his team. And fake out uh, slash Shark Punch on Lifeheart. But I didn't see Lifeheart as a potential problem, really. We had Tapu Koko, Mega Set. We had uh, plenty of things for Lifeheart, so I didn't see that coming. But uh, the speed invested in this, I believe, outsped a... Let me calculate this really quick. One sense. I, that was enough speed for a Scarf Lipard in case he decided to go that route. You never know. Um, I just wanted to be safe rather than sorry. I didn't think Lipard was coming, or Scarf Lipard for that matter, if it were to come. So I just thought this was important. I could have ran Mach Punch just in case that happened. But I wasn't going to bring this in recklessly or hastily on it anyway. So that's Hitmonlee. Endure, P Poison Jab, po Close Combat, and Knock Off. I didn't want to go HJK, High Jump Kick because we had a good chance of missing close combat hurts his team just as bad especially after a lychee berry popped um if he had scald on manaphy that would have stunk because he could have scored a potential burn but we'll see if that happens but anyway let's get started i'm gonna leave top of coco predicting crustal to spike stack us so let's get started um as tyler is going to issue us the challenge or we're gonna issue, yeah he's challenging us right now or it always says that it doesn't say who challenge to but he's actually gonna lead with doug trio and I didn't think this was a bad lead at all. Um, if we had U-turn, we could have gone for it, but he could have been scarfed and knocked us out. And that's not something I'm willing to risk turn one at all. So my best play here is easily just to hard switch straight out into Alamomola because it's our, it is our best way to deal with this. And in no way, shape, or form was I about to um, go into Mega Sceptile. He could have had HP Ice, Natural Gift Ice or like just toxic poisoned us on the switch and i didn't want that because septile like i said wasn't in condition and he actually oh he's cheeky right here and goes for a sub um predicting a status move and it pays off dividends we could have just clicked waterfall broken a sub and now that he's revealed i knew he had toxic once i saw a sub because that would have made no sense in my head so i knew toxic was coming and i was like this sucks elmo is literally gonna die now pretty much because of this so I go for a waterfall, breaking his sub, and now I'm just like, oh my goodness, Alamomola is going to die. We have no way of checking the damage on Metacham anymore, and this is going to be very, very problematic. I don't know what I'm going to do, and he switches out. So I'm just like, thankfully he switched out, and he's actually going to go into Wanda, which is his Clefable. And looking at this damage, obviously we're uninvested, but that does not look like a physically defensive Clefable at all. Maybe it has a little bit of a defense. But it just shows me that he's max HP. Doesn't look like he's got that much defense. So I'm just like, Kim on lead probably can take it out after plus one poison jab. As long as he's not the Kebia Berry. And he actually predicts us nicely. And he goes for the Psychic on our Nidoqueen switch in. Which does a little bit over half. Which I don't really care about. Breaks our Sash. But I'm just in here to get our Toxic Spikes up. Because he didn't bring Hazard Removal. He didn't doesn't have a Poison type. Everything's going to get poisoned. And I'm just going to go for a Toxic Spikes here. Because it's the best play. And getting his team whittled down for Hitmonlee, for Septa, for Tapu Koko, or even Chinchino is going to be insanely great for us. So we're going to just go into Tapu Koko. Um, just in case he decides to like just click Tail Glow here or something like that. We can threaten it out with a Wild Charge. And he's actually just going to go for the Ice Beam, predicting the Mega Septile. I was not about to risk a potential win condition against his team. 
so early in the match. Um, I'm just going to go click Nature's Madness because I was pretty sure he was Wakan at this point. Like, like I didn't see leftovers or anything, but just, like, I know Tyler's playstyle, and I kind of felt that it was Wakan, but I didn't really have a great switch into it anyway. But now I'm just going to click Roost because I want to see if, what his moveset's all about. And plus, we can roost off more damage than what he's doing with Surf to us, I believe. Am I wrong? No, I think I'm right here. We restored 90-something HP. Or 80-something. No, he's actually doing more. I lied. I don't know what I'm talking about. Actually, it's about the same. But I just want to go for a wild charge here. And, and break that Wakan Berry so we can weaken this down. And this is, since he doesn't have Rain Dance up, he can't click Rest and uh, get off or gain HP back and go back at the full and wake up. So that's important. As he actually clicks Rain Dance here, which I was kind of surprised about. I was surprised he just didn't kill me with Surf, but I'm more than okay with this. As I can just click Wild Charge and knock out the Manaphy here, or the Asuna, obviously sort of online. Which he likes the Abridged series, because <laughs> it's better than the normal one, he says. I haven't watched the Abridged, so I don't know. But anyway, Electric Train is going to go away now. He's going to go to Xerxes, which is his Mega Ampharos. I was tempted to click Taunt here, um, but I just wanted to get damage off because I thought that was the best play in the long haul with this Tapu Koko. Because if he was agility, like we had Scarf Chinchino in the back anyway, so it really didn't matter. Like we had always spent a plus or plus two agility man or Mega Ampharos anyway. But he avoids Nature's Madness, so I'm just like, oh, this is not good. I don't know what I'm going to do now because our Mega Sceptile does not have enough speed to outspeed this. I didn't think he would like I had like I didn't think he would for sure bring it. Like we had ways to play around it with Chinchino and obviously, obviously, but we have to get him low enough where Tail Slap is going to like knock him out. And however, also do note <laughs> if uh, we miss Tail Slap, we're essentially going to lose this game, pretty much. So basically, we have to play around it. We have to get the poison damage. Uh, we're going to click Protect right here because we need to get residual poison damage. I was really happy I brought Protect here. Otherwise, this Mega Ampros may have just like done enough damage to our team where we couldn't have won. But also, we could have just gone into Hitmonlee prematurely and burned our Lychee Berry. I didn't want to have to do that, but if we had to, we would have had to. Uh, that was another way to play around Agility Mega Ampros, so... I'm not really too too worried about it, but we're going to Tapu Koko. And I just realized I didn't give anybody nicknames. That makes me sad, actually. That makes me very sad we didn't give people nicknames. But he's just going to click Thunderbolt as he gets the Electric Terrain back up. Um, according to the damage roll, um, well, not there, obviously. I'm getting ahead of myself, but he's going to get be about 50% now um, with this. And we have to go into Chinchino because I don't want to burn him on the yet. So we're going to go for Tail Slap. Because it is our best play. And it's a damage roll to try to hit this thing five times. Well, not five times. It's going to kill for sure five times. But it barely kills. It barely kills. Like, if he had a little bit more HP, that might not have killed. But it does. But then again, we wouldn't have been in that position had we just hit Nature's Madness right away. But that's okay. It doesn't really matter. He's going to go into Crustinel, get that thing poisoned. As he's down to four Pokemon now. His Crustal, Metacham, Clefable, and something else or does he have three i think he only has three probably but he's gonna go for rock blast and we avoid it which isn't that crucial here i mean i was just going to this to whittle this crustal down that way we could go into him only in a couple turns and set up a lychee berry or set up and potentially win right here so that'd be that'll be nice if we're able to do that and we're gonna go for a waterfall right here and he's gonna set up his rocks which isn't gonna matter because we have no Pokemon weak to rocks on our team just for residual damage I guess those mid to late game rocks may pay dividends who knows depending on his set and everything like that but he's getting whittled and I can click waterfall one more time which um, I should have gone straight to him only right here I guess I was saving it for late game if I needed it to for uh, Metacham but yes he's actually gonna show him to be the Eapapa e Berry and that means uh, he's going to click Rock Blast right here, and then Poison will slowly whittle us down. He's got Doug Trio left. That's his fourth Pokemon I couldn't think of. But yeah, uh, we're going to get whittled down by because we're badly poisoned, as he's just going to go for Rock Blast, as I just did. I'm just really tired. I I'm on vacation pretty much soon, in like a day or so. 
But I'm just going to go straight into him on the A because I believe I might be able to sweep his team at this point. Depending on his Metacham set. So I go into him on Lee because I know I can take any one move. And he actually reveals to go for Earthquake right here. Switching out moves which is a good play. And that's going to do a huge chunk of damage to our him on Lee. But we are in Dewar. So I think he might be tempted to go for another Earthquake. Uh, put us into range of a... Um, that and I was pretty sure he wasn't going to go Rock Blast. I was pretty sure he was just going to knock us out. Try to knock us out with Earthquake. Which will be left at 1 HP. And we'll be able to knock out this Crustle, which is great for us. Um, gonna pop our Lychee Berry. And I have to actually go for a close combat here. I didn't really want to go for a close combat here. Um, but I felt Knockoff might not kill if he's max physically defensive, because it is a Crustle. And I wanted to for sure knock it out. And based on the HP bar going down really low, I'm pretty sure he's defensive. I can't tell for sure. But yes, he's going to go into Clefable now. And he doesn't know we have Poison Jab. I don't know he's not Kebia Berry, but I can't really afford to switch out into anything. As Alamomola is going to be nice for seeing the damage on Metacham. So I'm just going to go for an Endure as he's going to go for a Moonblast. And let's see if he's actually Magic Guard or unaware here. And he is actually unaware because as you can see... Um, he's taking poison damage. Um, Magic Guard wouldn't have done that. So we can go for a poison jab. This is just adamant, but it's still going to hit like a truck. And he's not physically defensive at all, because Fizz Death, Clefable, probably would have lived that from that range. Uh, actually, bef no, not before. We didn't see he was poisoned yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's going to go into a Metacham right here. I probably could have gone for an Endure right here. I probably should have, because then we would have knocked out this Metacham and swept with him on Lee and that would have been really cool to get a nice sweep with him on Lee. It would have been great for our differential actually. I don't know why I didn't click endure there. I really should have. I don't know why I didn't looking back. I guess I just didn't see it but I just wanted to be safe rather than sorry and I wanted to get a kill with Neo Queen, I guess because of the, the toxic spikes, uh, poison damage but he's going to go into Doug Jewel here and I wanted to get some Sceptile action. I wanted to go for a nice Leaf Blade on this Doug Trio as we know we're going to outspeed here. Um, because we are faster than a Dugtrio, and I know he's not Scarf because he switched up moves before, so that will be a nice 3-0 victory in our favor. Good game, Tyler. Make sure you check out Phantom Base. His, his links will be in the description down below to his Twitter and YouTube. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Substrike Army. Have a great day, and I love you all so very much. Wait a second. I don't want to say adios yet because the standstill image isn't there. Well, wait a second. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. But now, have a great day, and I love you all so very much. Adios of Strike Army. Bye-bye.